Steve, thanks for thanks for joining me out here. Hey, Michael, my pleasure. Steve is a super good friend of mine. Uh, you're member number twenty one thirty nine. Thirty nine, yeah. Uh, let me ask you an obvious question. So, yeah. you have an enviable rig, which is a Series Three Land Rover Defender. <laughs> right, one hundred nine. Right, one hundred nine. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, now behind me is what could be that sleeper overland uh, killer platform <laughs> right off the assembly line. Right. Okay. Yeah. So 109 power wagon. <clears throat> Why did you get this beast? It, they actually do connect. Yeah. So the thing with the 109 is that it's kind of a project. Right. Right. It's uh, 45, 46 years old. It's a beautiful vehicle, but it takes a lot of time and effort to maintain yeah. if you want to use it frequently. Right. So with this, I wanted to get a capable truck. It, you know, I wanted to have a full-size truck with off-road capability, but I didn't want to spend a bunch of time building that. Right. This comes with pretty much everything you need as stock. Now, I've done a couple of things on it. We can talk about that. Right. But, you know, right from the factory, obviously, it's four-wheel drive. Yep has front and rear lockers, has a sway bar disconnect. Right. And, uh, you know, so it's, um, it's th they're things that you typically, you may not get in a vehicle, you may add those. Right. So, so right from the factory, it's usable. And let's mention a couple of other things. I, I started reading up on the power wagon and you have um, 14 inches of ground clearance stock. Yep. And your suspension travel is 26 inches yeah. when your sway bars are disconnected. Yep. So you guys just go through that list of uh, features that we just hit on. 14 inches of ground clearance, 26 inches of suspension travel, yeah. front rear lockers. Yeah, and if you see this from you know from the side, it looks lifted. It actually comes this way from the factory. And it comes it, with 33s. It's, it's, it comes with 33s, yeah. Right. I think there's a two or three inch lift, effectively a lift from the factory. Yeah. So it, it does ride pretty high yes. in addition to the, all the movement you get with the sway bars disconnected. Right. You know, so. And uh, so another thing from the factory right here. Yeah. Is uh, a 12,000 pound worn winch. Right. I didn't mention that the winch right. com comes with. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes with a remote. And yeah. Yeah. 12,000. It's a worn winch. Uh, what are the trade offs of driving a full size rig? Yeah, I mean, it actually behaves really well on the freeway. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did a lot of commuting on the freeway back and forth from, you know, SoCal up to Central Coast. And it's, you could cruise like, and I literally did for six, eight hours in this thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it has mud tires. We'll talk about those, I guess. But so there's a little bit of road noise. But for long distance freeway driving, it's great. Yeah. In a city, you know, the obvious trade-off is the length, so the turn-in radius is pretty poor. Yeah. So you have to re reverse in to park, pretty much. Yeah. You know, because the turning circle in reverse is better. And so you have to get pretty good at that. Right. The visibility going right. forward is, you know... Non-existent. I was like, Michael, <laughs> am I three feet or three inches away from that, that vehicle in front? Yeah. So seeing over the large hood... Yeah. Uh, now, you can get a camera, the, the, the yeah. head supports the standard radio. I, right. I don't have that in this. So uh, lots of ground clearance and a big hood because underneath this hood is a... Yeah, it's a 6.4 Hemi. Yeah. So it's a V8, obviously. Right. And it's about 400 horsepower, about a little bit more than that in, in terms of torque. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's pretty good. So it, in, it, in low range, uh, so in low range with that kind of torque, it's going to be plenty capable oh, on, yeah. on the trail or crawling over stuff. Yeah, you just yeah. sort of take your foot off the gas and put it into hill descent and, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah, great. And, it, and it's a light touch as well. Mm -hmm. You don't sort of, you know, jolt forward like this. You get, right. you do get a lot of good control with that. Right. Yeah. So that right. leads to my next question. Just comparing and contrasting your experience. I believe you were in a 110 over There's there. There's a yeah, Defender 110. Uh, it, with with this, how did they uh, compare in terms of trail worthiness or road worthiness? Well, that's an interesting thing. We were in Scotland. Yeah. So you really don't get to go off road uh -huh. um, in Scotland other than sort of curated things that you can do. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I've driven a few Land Rovers. I've owned a few. The, that was a diesel. Yeah. And it was a stick shift. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, and they're, they're definitely more tractor-like, even, even to the end. They don't make the fenders anymore, not the old style. But, you know, they're, they're, they have some nice mod cons, but they're, they're pretty, pretty agricultural in, in style. <laughs> their DNA. <laughs> and that, that's part of the character. I think that's what, one of the things, people like the square angles on them. Yeah. This rounded, more modern, has a lot of electronics, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Nice, perhaps nicer or a little bit smoother to drive. Yeah, um, Land Rovers are pretty good on, on the road. I mean, they're sort of, like I said, a little agricultural. Yeah. This is definitely, you know, a nicer vehicle to drive on the highway, yeah. in my opinion. So tell me about the interior. Uh, you were pointing out that flat deck in the back, and clearly they're all a crew cab. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about the interior. Yeah, so uh, it's, like I said, it's a crew cab. It actually has a bench seat in the front. Mm -hmm. So you can, at a pinch, seat six people in right. there. I don't know that I'd recommend that because I don't know that you have to be pretty good friends with the person <laughs> next to you in the front. Uh, yeah, the inside's uh, pretty modern, pretty well equipped. Yeah. Um, you know, it has, like I said, it has a lot of the electronics, so there's navigation and all that stuff comes with. Now, what about that flat deck? So I think uh, certainly all the power wagons have the, I think they call it a fold flat mm -hmm. floor. And so basically you fold the rear bench seat up Mm -hmm. And then there's a folding floor panel that goes over, so you get a flat deck back there. Yeah. And people like to put their dogs back there because mm -hmm. they get, you know, more. They don't want to put the dog in the back of the of the pickup right. necessarily. They want to keep it inside. So a lot of people do that. We do it. We we basically keep the pickup bed empty mm -hmm. and carry everything inside because we'll camp in the back. Right. We have the soft topper and everything. We can talk about that. So we don't want to be having to move everything out when we go stop yeah. and camp. So we, we keep it all inside on the flat deck. Yep. You know, we can stack a couple of the uh, Wolfpack, uh, the Frontier boxes in there very easily and all of the sleeping stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, if there are only two of you, which there generally are with us, yeah, that works out well. Yeah. If you have kids with you, not so much, you know, because right. you're going to have to give them a seat. You have to do some shuffling, so, but yeah. Yeah, and I, it's a great place if, if people do opt to go with a, with a refrigerator, it would be a great place to have a fridge there as well. Yeah, we've, we want to do that actually, yeah. do a sort of slide out sideways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it, it also, uh, we're, you have 110 in the, uh, in the uh, yeah. inverter yeah. that comes in the comes factory with. Yeah. As, as well. Yeah. So a lot of great, just um, right from the factory, uh, great accommodations if you are going to take it on a lo long road trip or some kind of overland trip. Yeah, it's a modern vehicle, yeah. you know, and it has a lot of the sort of, you kind of expect to have a certain level mm -hmm. of uh, electronics these days. Hopefully they're reliable, yeah. you know, there's more stuff you have, the more there is to go wrong, but so far so good. Let's talk about gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it uses gas. It does. <laughs> I get, yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> Well, I have the 35 tires, so the the reading inside is skewed by about 6%. Right. So it's reading low. So I, I get about 13 miles plus 6% to a gallon. Right. Okay. So great big rig, great big engine, um, 13 plus or minus when you're driving around, yeah. you know, on average. Yeah. Uh, still better than my Land Cruiser. Tell me about what you've done. Uh, so probably the first thing I did was I have uh, uh, aftermarket wheels. Yep. So I have the method hole, I think is the, the type of uh -huh. the wheels. So they're basically, um, I think they're uh, 12 and a half and they're 17 inch, you know, 17 inch radius. And um, they're about, they're a zero offset and which pushes them that way by about an inch. Right. So they, they do stick out a little beyond the factory. Um, so they're 35s, they, there's no problem with that. You know, 33 mm -hmm. is stock. People do put 37s on with no issue. And I have the uh, Toyo MT uh, Open Country mm -hmm. mud terrain tires. Um, do you like them? I think they're great. Great. I've had them for about 14,000 miles so far. Mm -hmm. And done a lot of freeway driving in that. And they're they're really good. Not too noisy on road. Great. And I've been in mud a few times. Yeah, honestly, I didn't notice it on the on the freeway, but I right. have my own I have my own mud trains. Tell me about that swing out back there. 
Yeah, so the swing out is uh, from Rigged Supply. Uh -huh. Those guys are in Orange County. And uh, it's a pretty new product. It came out last year, I think. And the one I have is the uh, Ultra Swing is the brand name, I think. It's the multi-fit. So it was designed with more um, clearance for larger vehicles. And um, it's a hitch mount. So it's not a bumper mount, it's not a new bumper. It mounts to the rear hitch. And I'm pretty happy with it, actually. It swings clear of the vehicle. Oh, that's great. You know, so I can get the tailgate down without any issue. Fantastic. Yeah. And then you've got a soft top. Tell yeah. us about that. The soft topper, it's the, you know, the soft canvas uh, shell for the back. Uh -huh. And uh, it's pretty cool. You can, what's cool about it is it's, it's waterproof, first of all. Uh, so we've camped in there a bunch of times, even in the rain. We've been, actually at Overland Expo, there was a downpour on that first day. We were dry. Um, you can, it's pretty easy to fit. You can remove it easily. So, you know, if you want to have, if you want to put a fridge in there to help your neighbor move house or something, <laughs> you can just take it off. Right. And it comes off easily. And it also folds up, so you can leave it on the truck, but fold it back. Mm -hmm. So it's very versatile. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And the, the, the bed size is six foot... Six foot four. Six foot four. Or 6.4 feet, I'm not sure yeah, which. Yeah, that's a nice size. Yeah, we can uh, sleep back there, my wife and I. We have the uh, X-Ped self-inflating mattresses. Uh -huh. And you put them side by side. We have six and a half feet of length. Right. It's perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's and, great. You, you know, and you sort of... We, we had some bad experiences with rooftop tents <laughs> in, the win in windy conditions. Folding up on you maybe Folding in, the, up. in the Scotland Highlands? So my wife was like, I never wanted to do that again. And so I was like, how about this? And she, yeah, she liked it. Right on, yeah. right on, cool deal. So Steve, what else on the, on the interior have you modified? Is there anything else in there? Yeah, just a couple of things. We have, I, and I can't for the life of me remember the brand. Maybe you can look it up and put okay. a link. Okay, put a link or something, okay. But it's a uh, mount for the RAM mount. Mm -hmm for phones, mounting phones and everything like that. So you get, it's a plate that goes, and I'm sure you'll catch it on B-roll, but it's a plate yeah. that goes right on top of the dash. Yeah. And you can uh, put a sucker mount there with a RAM mount. We actually have a magnetic mount in there. Yeah. And it works great, actually. We wondered if it would fall off with an iPad hanging on the RAM mount, but it was perfect. So that, that was just a little mod we did. Uh, we have CB radio. Uh-huh. Um, I actually have a video coming up on the install for that. Great. Darn incredible. All right, so help me break this down again. Yeah. Let's go through the list. This thing uh, off the factory floor is a freaking overlanding beast. I was, I, was, I was amazed by the feature set just stock. Go. Okay, so <laughs> the front and rear lockers. Right. Swim by disconnect. Right. Uh, 6.4 liter Hemi. Yep. Engine, full size pickup. So you've got, you know, six people capacity, crew cab, mm -hmm. uh, six and a half feet bed, 35 inch tires. Uh, you can fit 37 inch tires. 37 inch will go on off without, the factory. people do that without doing any mods. Yep. Um, sway bar disconnect gives you 26 inches of travel right. on, on the suspension. Yep. It has about two to three inch lift from the factory effectively. And you can see how high it rides. So that's, I haven't done anything, that's how it comes. Yeah. <laughs> And 14, so 14 inches of ground clearance. 14 inches. The, and the other two things I remember is 12,000 pound worn winch yep. and that nice flat area behind the seats where you can have a refrigerator or a puppy or yep. your, you know, your gear. Yeah, the full yeah. flat floor, I think they call it. Right on, yeah. right on. Yeah. All right, Steve, hey, cool. thanks for sharing. Michael, I really, my yeah, pleasure, yeah. Really appreciate it. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And again, so you are um, travel, 4x4.tv on Correct. Instagram, Instagram and Travel4x4TV on YouTube. Yep, and yep. you can find that from the Instagram profile link. You guys, uh, of course we appreciate your subscribes. Go and check out Steve if you want to see some of the stuff that we talked about a little earlier today. If you really want to help us out, go on over to the Overland Bound website and consider joining our worldwide Overland Bound crew with Steve and us. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for hanging. Bye.